Hey, what's up everybody? In this video, we're gonna talk about the mole concept. And the mole concept is a very important concept in chemistry, and it's definitely going to be encountered again once we start going over topics such as stoichiometry, chemical reactions, and indeed many, many other topics. So it's a good idea not only to become familiar with the mole concept, but to become comfortable with it also. So the basic idea behind the mole concept is that chemists often need to count atoms. We often need to know how many atoms there are in a sample of a given element. However, because atoms are so small, this can be extremely difficult to do by ordinary methods. If you were to count atoms one by one all day, every day for the rest of your life, you would barely be able to account for a single speck of dust. So we need an easier, much more effective way by which to count atoms. And the way that chemists use is to count atoms by weighing them. So counting things by weighing them is not just something that chemists, chemists do. Uh, there are several examples of counting by weighing, both in real life and in fiction. So, uh, for example, I'll, I'll start by throwing a fictional example at you. Uh, in the TV show Breaking Bad, the main character of the show, Walter White, he says that at one point during the show, he says that he has so much money that he counted it by weighing it on his bathroom scale. Uh, so there's one example in fiction. Uh, as a real life example, um, if you've ever been uh, to the grocery store and picked up shrimp, you may have noticed a quantity called the count. And the count is how many shrimp there are in a pound of shrimp. So, for instance, if I have 41 to 50 count shrimp, then that means I have 41 to 50 shrimp in a pound. If I have two pounds of 41 to 50 count shrimp, then that means I have anywhere from 82 to 100 shrimp in those two pounds. So the bigger the shrimp, the smaller the count. So that's uh, a couple of examples of counting by weighing. Chemists, like I said, what they do is they count atoms by weighing them, and they do it in a much, much more precise way uh, than counting shrimp or counting money on a bathroom scale. And uh, one of the main tools that helps chemists count atoms is the mole. Now, the mole is uh, often referred to as the chemist's dozen. It's basically just a large number. Whenever we have large numbers of things, we often use large units just to keep our numbers nice and small. So the, the uh, dozen, as you know, is a unit that corresponds to 12 objects. Uh, you may be fam familiar with a score. That's a unit that corresponds to 20 objects. Uh, the gross, that's 144 objects. And the mole is defined as the amount of a substance that contains 6.0221421 times 10 to the 23rd particles. So this number here, this 6.0221421 times 10 to the 23rd, this is called Avogadro's number. So if you have a mole of anything, then you have Avogadro's number of that thing. If you have a mole of pancakes, then that means you have 6.0221421 times 10 to the 23rd pancakes. If you have a mole of marbles, you have 6.0221421 times 10 to the 23rd marbles, and so on and so forth. Now, two things should be immediately apparent about this number. And one of those things is that, well, first of all, this number is huge. This is a very, very large number. So the reason why we use such a large number is because atoms are so small. And once we uh, multiply it by this really large number, well, that allows us to uh, basically attach a number to things that we can actually see and reach out and, 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 and look at and, and lift and, and touch. You know, it, it gives us a way to attach a number to things that are tangible. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, for instance, a, uh, a mole of copper atoms is about equal to 22 copper pennies. Uh, a mole of water molecules is roughly equal to a tablespoon of water, and so on and so forth. So, uh, another thing that should be apparent is that this is a very specific number. This 6.022 blah 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 blah, why is it uh, so long-winded? Why don't we just use a power of 10 and make things much easier? Well, the reason why is because there's another definition of the mole. Uh, the way that the mole uh, was defined originally is the number of atoms in a 12 gram sample of carbon-12. So, uh, that means if I have exactly 12 grams of pure carbon-12, then that means I have Avogadro's number of carbon-12 atoms. So, th so this is pretty interesting because uh, not only is the atomic mass unit, if you remember the atomic mass unit, that's defined relative to carbon-12. That's defined as one twelfth of the mass of a carbon-12 atom. Not only is the, carbon, is the uh, atomic mass unit defined relative to carbon-12, but the mole is also defined relative to carbon-12. So uh, the mole can be used as a conversion factor. And the way that we use the mole as a conversion factor is to convert between the number of atoms of an element and the number of moles of atoms of an element. So Avogadro's number as a conversion factor may take on each of these forms. 
It can be used to convert from atoms to moles, in which case we would put Avogadro's number on the bottom and one mole of atoms on top. Or it can be used to convert from moles to atoms, in which we would put one mole of atoms on the bottom and Avogadro's number on top. So let's do an example where we use Avogadro's number as a conversion factor. So this problem says to calculate the number of gold atoms in 8.73 moles of gold. So I start with my 8.73 moles of gold. And I'm going to set up my conversion factor. And in my conversion factor, I'm going to put moles of gold on the bottom. And I'm going to put atoms of gold on the top. And according to Avogadro's number in the mole concept, uh, one mole of gold is going to be equal to 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd gold atoms. Now, I know a moment ago I, I said that Avogadro's number was actually 6.0221421 times 10 to the 23rd. But usually, Avogadro's number is rounded to four significant figures in most calculations. So usually, just 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd uh, will be quite sufficient for your calculations. So uh, this is our conversion factor. Let's just make sure that our, uh, that our units cancel real quick. Whoops, I accidentally got rid of it. And there it is. <laughs> so moles of gold cancels with moles of gold. We're left with nothing but atoms. And our final answer is going to be rounded to three significant figures, because that's how many uh, sig figs this number has. And our number is going to be 5.26 times 10 to the 24th gold atoms. So again, all we did was we just started with moles, and we converted that to atoms using Avogadro's number. Now, remember a moment ago when I talked about counting things by weighing them, the mole certainly helps counting by weighing, but it's, it doesn't really help fully. We need another quantity to count atoms by weighing them, and that is molar mass. So the molar mass is the mass in grams of one mole of atoms of a given element. And the, uh, the nice thing about the molar mass is that it's actually equivalent to the corresponding element's atomic mass in atomic mass units. So for instance, uh, this is potassium. Uh, if we look at this long-winded number here at the bottom of the uh, at the bottom of the chemical symbol here, this 39.098, this number tells us that a potassium atom, on average, weighs uh, has a mass of 39.098 atomic mass units. Uh, but this number also tells us that a mole of potassium atoms weighs 39.098 grams. So that's very useful. We can convert now from grams to moles, or vice versa using the molar mass. We can convert between the mass of a substance and the amount of a substance. So now that we have Avogadro's number and molar mass, we're now in a position where we can start with the mass of an element and convert that all the way to the number of atoms of that element. So again, we start with the mass of an element and where we want to end up is the number of atoms of that element. We can't go there directly, but what we can do is we can convert uh, the mass of an element to the number of moles of the element, and we use molar mass to carry out that conversion. And then we simply use Avogadro's number to convert from the moles of the element to the number of atoms of that element. So let's do a problem uh, where we do that. So this problem says, how many argon atoms are in a 79.2 gram sample of argon? So again, we start with our, uh, our mass, which is 79.2 grams of argon. And the molar mass of argon, you, just, uh, you can find that just by looking at your periodic table. And the molar mass of argon is 39.948 grams of argon per one mole of argon. So see what I did there? I used the, uh, the molar mass as a conversion factor. I put grams on the bottom and I put moles on top. And now we have the moles of argon, so now we're trying to get the atoms of argon. So like I said, we're just going to use Avogadro's number. And one mole of argon is going to be equal to Avogadro's number of argon atoms. So that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd 
atoms of argon. And let's make sure our units cancel. Whoops, I got rid of it again. Keep doing that. Grams cancels with grams. Moles cancels with moles. And we're left with nothing but good old atoms. And uh, we're going to use uh, three significant figures here. This is the fewest number of significant figures right here. This is three. So we're going to use that. And our number is going to end up being 1.19 times 10 to the 24th argon atoms. So this is a very uh, powerful tool. We can start by simply weighing something, which is very easy, easily uh, doable. We can just put it on an, uh, an analytical balance. And just by using these two conversions, we can, you know, again, start by weighing something and then get all the way to the number of atoms uh, that we have in that sample. So I'm going to finish it off with one more example here. And this example says, what is the mass of a single iron atom in grams? So let's, uh, let's go ahead and do it. So we start with one iron atom, one iron atom. And what we can do is we, convert, we can convert to moles of iron using Avogadro's number. So that's, uh, we're gonna put Avogadro's number on the bottom, that's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd atoms and that is equal to one mole of iron and once we have moles of iron what we're going to do is we're going to use the molar mass of iron to get grams so according to the molar mass of iron which again you can uh, look at that using your periodic table uh, the molar mass of iron is 55.84 five grams of iron per one mole of iron. And let's make sure our units cancel. We have atoms canceling with atoms. We have moles canceling with, whoops, I just did that the wrong way, didn't I? <laughs> yeah, let me back up a little bit. Again, you always got to make sure you uh, you cancel out your units. See, if I didn't if I didn't cancel out my unit, if I didn't take do that step, I would have gotten the calculation all wrong. Uh, so one mole of iron, wow, one mole of iron is equal to fifty five point eight four five grams of iron. Sorry about that, guys. I kind of uh, messed that one up there a little bit, but <laughs> we got it right eventually, though, didn't we? Okay. So atoms cancels out with atoms, and moles cancels out with moles, and we're left with grams of iron. And if you uh, put this into the calculator and do it yourself, you're going to get a total of, what are you going to get? You're going to get 9.273 times 10 to the negative 23rd grams of iron. And this is a really, really small number, which makes sense because it's an atom. It's really small, so if we weigh it in grams, it's going to have a really, really small value. So there you go. That is the mole concept, and I hope this video helped you out a little bit. And uh, all right, take it easy.